Hello, I am Dylan Campbell. Welcome to the second talk of the tutorial on deep declarative networks at ECCV 2020. This one will focus on some of the applications. So the big question is, where can declarative layers be usefully applied? The simple but slightly circular answer is, wherever optimization, possibly with hard constraints, might be useful in a network layer. I'm only going to be looking at a handful of applications in this talk, but want to give a sense of the range here, despite this list being by no means comprehensive. The first class of applications involve projection, with applications to top K classification, with the limited multi-label projection, adversarial robustness, with LP sphere projection, and GANs, with transport polytope projection. The second class include pooling layer alternatives with applications to robust point set classification and video classification. Another set of applications come under the category of geometric model fitting, solving, for example, problems in visual geometry, such as optical flow and camera pose estimation. There are many more highly promising application domains including a significant amount of work in meta-learning and control, as well as compelling work on solving smoothed maximum satisfiability problems to learn with logic constraints. Other related work has demonstrated applications to neural ODEs, approximating discrete optimization, clustering, tracking, and structure from motion. We'll first look at some examples of pooling, which was flagged in the introductory talk. We saw that global average pooling, which is a standard neural network operation, could be specified as a declarative layer, allowing us to think about how this operation might be usefully modified. Writing average pooling as a declarative layer lets us see immediately that we can drop in alternatives for this layer, such as robust pooling, where we replace the L2 distance of the average pooling operation with a robust penalty function phi. Examples of potential robust penalty functions are shown in the table, with robustness increasing towards the right. So we can have Huber pooling and truncated quadratic pooling, all using the same framework. Since the forward and backward pass are decoupled in declarative layers, we can use any optimization algorithm to solve for the pooled value and still backpropagate efficiently through the layer. Notice that some of the penalty functions are non-convex. The declarative approach even allows for the use of non-differentiable algorithms, such as RANSAC, to optimize these objectives. A Jupyter Notebook tutorial is available at the given link, where we implement these layers and investigate their properties. Here we show an example of robust vector pooling, where the overall loss function is the squared error, that is, we aim to drive the robust averages to zero. Notice that the outliers have little effect on the robust averages and so do not get adjusted by gradient descent. In contrast, for average pooling, the outliers have undue effect on all of the features. And in this case, outliers may be, for example, points from a second distributional model, for example, when you have multiple moving objects in a scene. We've also applied robust pooling to point cloud classification in the presence of outliers, in this case, random outliers. For example, with 50% outliers on the ModelNet 40 dataset, PointNet with standard max pooling achieves a 5% top one accuracy for classification, whereas truncated quadratic pooling achieves almost 60%, being significantly more robust to outliers. Another choice for altering the pooling operation that a declarative approach admits is sequence pooling, which summarizes a structured sequence of objects. Here we have an application of sequence pooling across the time dimension, known as rank pooling, which has been used for video classification. Here, psi is an element-wise transformation, phi is a temporal pooling function, and h is a classifier. Parameters are theta and beta, which are to be learned jointly. Rank pooling is efficiently solved using support vector regression, 
summarizing the dynamics of a video sequence in a single vector. For end-to-end -end learning, we'd require a way to backpropagate through the temporal pooling layer, which is possible if this is implemented as a declarative layer. Now we turn to some examples of projection, where we want to minimize some distance measure d with respect to some surface c. For example, Euclidean projection onto an LP sphere or ball, which has applications to adversarial robustness, and entropy regularized projection onto the interior of the limited multi-label polytope with applications to top K classification. So here the optimization problem is to find the nearest point on the sphere or ball to the given point. Except for the L2 case, this requires an algorithm to solve and is a non-convex equality constrained declarative node. We've seen improvements in image classification by using different projections and have ongoing work showing robustness to adversarial attack using these projections. Recall from the introductory video the toy example of an algorithm for computing the square root, which could be backpropagated through with standard techniques. Here we have a real world example of this with the Sinkhorn algorithm, which is both amenable to backpropagation, but can also be more efficiently implemented using implicit differentiation on the solution. As a side note, this is an early example of a deep equilibrium network when solved to convergence. The algorithm solves the projection of a non-negative matrix onto the transport polytope, that is solving an optimal transport problem. It has been used in many applications from Wasserstein GANs to camera pose estimation. However, I will focus on a single alternative example. In this paper, the authors address the problem of visual attribute ranking, which involves ordering a collection of images according to an attribute such as smiliness, and also the problem of self-supervised learning using the proxy task of recovering the original image from shuffled image patches. And here is the network diagram in question. The layer with the question mark is, or can be, a declarative layer that solves the transport polytope projection problem, for example, using the Sinkhorn algorithm and implicit differentiation in the backward pass. And here we have an example from visual geometry, which addresses the problem of jointly solving for optical flow and ego motion without supervision. It uses an off-the-shelf unsupervised optical flow network, in this case, cell flow from 2019, although any can be used here and adds a declarative loss function that computes the bulk motion between two images, which is assumed to be the ego motion, and uses this to regularize the optical flow with an epipolar loss term. Here, a state-of-the-art nonlinear optimization algorithm is used to accurately and quickly solve for the essential matrix, which is the five-point algorithm. Without being instantiated as a declarative layer, it would not be possible to backpropagate through this layer with standard techniques. And we find that regularizing the flow in this way, which we show on the far right, improves the result, particularly where you encounter the aperture problem, which is shown in the bottom row. This problem is a big limitation of only using local information for determining optical flow, with information related to the component of motion parallel to any edge becoming lost. The optimization layer allows us to introduce global information from visual geometry. Our final example is camera pose estimation. We consider the problem of estimating the camera pose from which a set of 2D points were viewed relative to a 3D point set without prior knowledge of the 2D 3D correspondences. This is known as the blind PNP problem. Jointly solving for position, orientation, and correspondences is extremely challenging because the search space is very large. In this work, we propose the first fully end-to-end -end trainable network for solving the blind PNP problem efficiently without pose priors. This would not be possible without the deep declarative networks framework, which allows us to incorporate geometric model fitting into an end-to-end -end learning framework including Sinkhorn, RANSAC, and PNP algorithms. 
we are combining standard neural layers with declarative layers to instantiate the traditional camera pose estimation pipeline of feature extraction, feature matching, and optimization in a single neural network. The input is a set of 2D and 3D point coordinates from which pointwise features are extracted using ResNet-like network layers. Feature matching is then performed by computing the pairwise distance between the point features and using the Sinkhorn algorithm to obtain a joint correspondence probability matrix. Finally, a probability-weighted blind PNP objective function is optimized from a RANSAC initialization to estimate the camera rotation and translation. By using declarative nodes, we can backpropagate through all of these optimization layers, which allows us to seamlessly integrate camera pose optimization algorithms, including robust global search techniques such as RANSAC and state-of-the-art nonlinear PNP solvers, into an end-to-end -end deep learning framework. The key experiment was relocalizing a camera from a single photo with respect to a point set of a scene on the Megadepth dataset. Our result in blue for the camera frustum coincides with the ground truth in black, unlike Gosma in red, a recent globally optimal method. Note that the network has never seen any of the test scenes during training and has to localize the camera from a single photo. That's it for this session. In the next section, we will be looking at the DDN library and doing some hands-on coding. Thank you for your attention. I would like to thank Dylan for this talk. At this point in the tutorial, you should be familiar with different applications of deep declarative networks, including pooling, projection, and geometric model fitting. In the next section of this tutorial, Dylan will walk you through the DDN library and do some hands-on coding.